So uh, Noah, what you're going to look at on this one is I'm going to ask you to graph this. All right. Now, this one's not going to be so bad for you, Noah, uh, for what we're going to do. So to graph a problem like this, all right, we know that a circle is here. We talked about the standard form of a circle. Right? The standard form of a circle says x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Yes? OK. So what I'm going to want to do, Ava, in this problem is take this and rewrite it in this format. Now, remember in parabolas, when we didn't have a quadratic that was in our vertex form, we had to complete the square once. right? We had to complete the square to produce our perfect square binomial. Well, now, our perfect square trinomial. But now, you notice for a circle, how many binomial squares do we have? Two. So it might be possible, and it is possible in this case, that we're going to have to, Alex, 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 you sit down. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square twice. So what we're going to do to complete the square, we first have to arrange our variables together. So we have x squared minus 8x plus y squared plus 12y equals 0. Now I can complete the square for each of these separately. Fortunately for us, we don't have any coefficients, right? So I can just do this one as negative 8 divided by 2 squared, which equals 16. This one's 12 divided by 2 squared, which equals 36. Therefore, I can write this as x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared plus 12y plus 36. Now, remember, since I'm adding a 16, I have to, I could subtract 16 on the same side, but I don't really want anything else except for my binomial squares on the left side. So I can put it on the other side. So if I add 16 on the right side, I have to add to the other side. All right. Now I can rewrite this as a binomial squared. So by factoring this, by factoring this, I write this as x minus 4 squared plus y plus 6 squared equals um, 42. 52. OK, so now we need to determine what is my radius, right? Um, oh, crap, I wrote the problem wrong. Oops. Wow. It's OK. This is going to be important because is it going to be kind of hard to graph a radius when you have it as 52? Yeah. So let me uh, go and rewrite the problem again that I had. I think it, I didn't write this. So it's plus 12 at the end. Destin, Alex, could you guys find two different seats? Just not even that row, just totally two different seats. So therefore, this ends up equaling 64. So find two different seats, not on that row, anywhere. I don't care, just anywhere in the, anywhere. So now, what we can do is now that we're looking at this, OK, what we can now simply look at is say, all right, now I've determined what, now I can determine what the center is. Center is going to be 4 comma negative 6. And then my radius is what? 8. So now is it going to be possible for me to be able to graph this? Of course. So what I'll be able to do is let's find a center. So my center is going to be at 4, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Then let's find the radius. So the radius would be 8. So that means I could go to the left 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That would be an endpoint. And then up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And obviously, you could be able to determine. You obviously you could be able to determine different points on there, all right. But I'll just kind of keep this simple, and I'll just show you those two points by using that. All right. Because it's the opposite of h and opposite of k. 